How's it going guys? Today we have something a little different. I'm going to be going over how I make my thumbnails for my YouTube channel. And by the way, my monitor is an ultra wide, so that's why the screen looks a bit compressed. But you should still be able to see everything that I'm doing. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so first of all, I'm in Blender. I've just posed this Salamence in a way to make it look pretty cool. Um, I've exported it. Um, there's a whole. There's going to be a whole other video on how to export models from um, to to Blender. Um, well, import models to Blender. Sorry, um, making the textures work, the animations work, etc. It's a long process, um, but it's definitely worth it to get some really cool dynamic poses like the one we've got here. So next up, we're going to go into Photoshop, and the first thing I usually like to do is I like to pick a background. So I'm going to go to my Assets folder, I'm going to go to my RTFX, Backgrounds, Backgrounds, and there's a bunch of backgrounds in here. If you Google RTFX, um, you can buy it online. It's not free so It's not free to use. Um, I just bought it, it was only like 100 quid or something like that, um, which you, know, you guys have paid for, um, which is great. Um, there's also another website where you can get a lot of effects for visual graphic design and stuff. Um, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. In fact, let's just go over it real quick. So it's this Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Legends website. Uh, Marcus Dose um, showed me this. He's an absolute legend. Shout out to him. There'll be a link to his socials in the description down below. Um, and you basically just click on a character like Vegeta. Go to... Not this one. This one doesn't have one. Uh, Super Gogeta. So we'll go to Fusion Zamazu because for some reason both of those didn't have one. And then if you look at his banner over here, there is a little HD asset album. Go to that, um, whatever. And there'll be all these effects, look, see? And you can save them all as PNG. So you can save that as a PNG and it'll look absolutely sick, that will. So I'm going to save that right now. Oh, I already have that one. Cool. Um, but you get like electric effects, stuff like that, glowing effects, these effects here, which again, I'm going to save. Um, some really cool effects. Um, and I'll show you how to apply them properly so that it actually looks good and doesn't look like. Next, a quick one on color. Um, I'm going to open this image in a new tab real quick and zoom in so you can see it better. So over here, um, to pick the background color, you want to go with a color that's the opposite on the spectrum to the color of the Pokemon that you're using. So Salamence is blue, um, closing in on the greenish area, and more like a turquoise color. Um, so you'd say a more reddy orange background would be good. So now that I've picked this background, um, fun fact, if uh, at the bottom it'll say create video timeline in Photoshop. Create the video timeline and then you can move it around and scrub it to have different um, things because it's a video background, it's not a, it's not an image background. All the RTFX ones are, are videos, um, which is really cool. So I'm going to go to blending options on the right. I'm going to go to a color overlay, change it to well, the color that it is really ready orangey color and make another one with the same color this time we're just going to leave it as normal and we're just going to adjust the opacity so that it kind of gets rid of the harshness of it all makes it a bit more smoother because you don't want the background to be too complicated and um, if it's too complicated it, that's just it's just you're not gonna have a good time so after rasterizing the layer style that's important you need to do that with the color overlays then you can start putting in different effects on for example a gradient overlay I use gradient overlay um, opacity 65 sometimes I experiment a bit um, and I use blending mode linear dodge add again Marcus Dose showed me how to do that uh, really top fella and um, if you you know I, I'd recommend commissioning him and stuff like that if he's open for commissions obviously don't pester him if he's not open for commissions and um, but yeah so um, with that being said I'm gonna put my uh, gradient overlay on there like that and I think that makes it look like a nice warm orange background now I'm going to go ahead and place the Salamence that I exported earlier. I'm going to scale it because we want it to be scaled. There we go. And then we're also going to drag the logo. If you've got a logo, you might not have a logo. I do, but you might not. And um, this is a new logo. Put it somewhere like near the Salamence's bum. Move the Salamence over a little bit so that you can see the badge more. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll click on the Salamence using your actual cursor. Go to filter, camera raw filter, that's important. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess around with some of the settings. So what I like to put the contrast up quite high and then make the shadows um, lighter and make the blacks lighter. Turn the whites down a bit and just mess around with these settings until you think it looks good. 
I think that looks nice. I'm going to turn up the vibrance a bit as well to get some more color in there. And then if you go to deep, you're on basic at the moment, you start with basic, go to detail, go to sharpening, put it up to about what, 40%, 35%. And then noise reduction, I actually like to make that all the way because it makes, if I can even get in there, it basically like, don't use it too much. If it's a Pokemon that has scales, you know, with the new texture effects that they've put in the Pokemon games with scales and stuff, then don't set this too high because it'll remove those and it'll look a bit weird like a clay model. But with Salamence, for example, you can barely see the scales on it anyway. I'm going to put the noise reduction right up there because it just makes the whole model look a lot smoother, a lot more cartoonish, which is kind of what I'm going for here. Next up, I'm going to go to Filter Gallery again. Um, filter at the top, Filter Gallery. Go to Stamp, which is under Sketch. Uh, mess around with the light dark balance until you get something that looks like that, pretty much. Um, smoothness, you can make the smoothness right up if you want to. I'm going to put the smoothness to about there. And then smooth this to about there. And then click OK. Sorry, I forgot, you need to make a copy of the um, of the layer first. So hold Alt and then do it on the copy. So you, now you'll have this one that looks like that. And you'll have the original Salamence underneath. Go into the uh, new one, the stamp one. Change the color overlay to black. So that it's, you know, black and white. Uh, rast rasterize the layer style. And then go over here and go to multiply. And you don't have to do this, by the way. This is just something I like to do. Um, go to multiply, lower the opacity a bit, and as you can see, it kind of gives it that like cell shading effect. There is a way to do cell shading in Blender, but again, that's a whole other video. Um, I might do it if you want me to, but this is just a little subpar method you can use. Um, so you put the stamp on there. Again, it, it makes the elements darker, um, but we can fix that anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge those layers. I'm going to make a copy first. So Alt, after selecting both of them, click Alt and drag. Um, and then I'm going to make those two one layer. I'm going to go back to the camera raw filter. Might be worth do it before you do the camera raw filter. I always put the noise reduction up even more if I can do, um, just because it makes it look really smooth and nice. Um, so we'll bump the contrast up a little bit. We're looking at shadows. We're going to bump shadows up. And we're looking at blacks, which we're going to bump up as well. Alternatively, you can just set the uh, layer to multiply. And then just lower the opacity and that's that's generally how i normally do it i just thought of it then so now that we've got all that sorted what we can do now is we can merge those layers into one salamence we'll go to inner glow this is going to make it pop out with the background make it linear dodge add put opacity to 100 if you want to size to make sure the chokes at zero and make sure this is on edge instead of center and technique is softer they should be like that by default Increasing the size is what you can do and um, not too much you want to have like a more of a border and then change the color to like something like the background color or make it lighter so around that for example um, I'm going to copy that number that number right there because that's the color code go to outer glow I'm going to do the exact same thing again and linear color linear dodge uh, we'll lower the spread to zero lower the size to about 43-ish and then as you can see it gives it a really nice glow effect which is ideal that's what we were kind of looking for really and now's the fun part we're going to have a look at our effects that we've got um so for example rt effects effects um elements um, i'm going to go for energy well it just crashed on me so let's look at some of the effects in the uh, video effects file so i call them rt effects as a folder uh, video effects as a folder and um, so we'll go video effects real quick and then we will look at all these effects. There's so many effects that you can choose from. Um, I just want something that's going to make it look like Salamance is going pretty fast. Um, so for you with this one, for example, move it above. And then you can do something like that. And then what you should do is because they are obviously you see the big flat line there and um, you can just erase that out real quick. Make it smoother, stuff like that. And then what we can do is we'll go linear dodge again on this one. So as you can see from normal, it looks very harsh, very colorful. Um, go to linear dodge add and it looks like it's white and it's got like, it looks more clean, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select Salamence. If you press control 
and select the layer of Salamance on the actual image thumbnail. It'll select Salamance entirely. Get your eraser out, click on the layer that's got the effect on it and then just kind of start um, rubbing them out a bit if you want to like not cover up too many body parts which is what I'm trying to do now. But what I would suggest and this is the feedback that I've been getting from people is do not go overboard on the effects. Like I've put that effect on and I think it looks pretty cool um, to be honest with you but I could like I could put loads more on there. I could put that on there if I really wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna like I think a little bit silly with these on, but actually that one looks quite alright to be fair. Um we'll look, see what it looks like. So linear dodge is that. But don't do just go for linear dodge. Try out the different ones as well. Because some of them might look alright. So this one, for example, overlay actually looks pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is what I wanna what is I'm going to select the a bit because I missed a bit there and there and there yep there we go so we're good to go there and um, select this one and I'm going to rub it out across the head um, and the the wings and the um, this left foot here or right foot which one ever one it is that way it looks like Salamence is popping out over that fiery effect so you could do something like that again this is just a mock thumbnail um, it's, I, might, I might save it and use it for a future video, you never know. Um, so now that you've done all that, there's not much to it really. Highlight all of the layers from the background to the very last effect that you used. Alt and drag up to make a copy of all of them. Right click and merge layers. So it's all one image now. So for example, I can just turn it off and on. But you'll have all of, all of the pieces for the puzzle um, underneath it. For if you need to change anything so now that you've got that layer selected for the whole image you want to go to filter camera raw filter once again and then obviously like do some other stuff like bump up the contrast a bit uh, bump up the shadows and highlights bump up the blacks uh, maybe put some texture on there don't put too much texture on though because you get color bleeding if you do that texture is nice though because it makes it pop a bit more up the vibrance a little bit go to detail Noise reduction will help with the color. Color if you if you um texture it too much, it'll help basically, and then up the sharpness as well a little bit as well. And there you have it. So you can see the difference. Just for a bit of color correction and some texture correction, makes a world of disparate difference. Um, so that's my Salamence thumbnail that I've just made for you guys live on camera. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that, um, maybe if you want to know how I made the logo. Um, it, it took me five minutes like <laughs> literally is but anyway thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful if you did of course leave a like and subscribe and with that being said i'll see you all in a bit